I don't know at what part we started losing humanity. I'm like human caring and just it becoming papers and, and bureaucracy and politics and I don't know, which means that on my birthday I was dealing with bureaucracy all day long just receiving airplane tickets and sending them to people and didn't have a moment of quiet and also arranging for Amit to come from the jungle uh, to the city because he was taking the airplane with us. At the end of the day, after I finished with all the tickets, I rested for half an hour and I finished my birthday with like one hour in the swimming pool up at Selena's with some music that Kobe put and Amit and Amir was there with us and I was just in the swimming pool at night time. I don't know, having a time for to remember that it's my birthday. I took a quick shower, packed my bags so quickly. I'm, I'm surprised that I didn't forget anything. And went to the airport. And then in the airport, it was another big chaos of... Well, one woman was there with her kids and they were moving back to Israel. And the father of the kids stayed in Panama. She had loads of suitcases, so he helped her in, but then after a period of time, he needed to go out because of the rules of the corona. Once he left, he couldn't come back in to say goodbye to the kids, but also they didn't allow the kids to go out to say goodbye to him. Them saying goodbye through a window? And it was just horrible to see. And I tried to see who can I talk to about it and uh, how can I help with it. Then I called the Israeli ambassador that was supposed to come. It wasn't the Israeli security, it was the Panamanian security. There was no one to talk to. At the same time came a girl named Sari. The day before she tried throughout the whole day to book her flight with the visa card and it didn't work and didn't work and, and she tried a different card and it didn't work and then in the evening I just told her well you know what never mind if you want to be on the airplane just come we will organize the payments and um, when we get to Israel or when you arrive to the airport just 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 come like don't stay in Panama just because you can't pay for the ticket right now. I needed to arrange for the flight company to know that she's going and to arrange everything and for them to give her her ticket and after that we'll arrange the payment. Then I had an interview for this channel in Israel that basically chased me and they were kind of, um, they were really patient because I kept running around and they tried to contact me through Amir and, and eventually needed to give them about 10 minutes of my time and at the same time came a couple of the guys that were from the local Panamanian charity that helped me a lot. I met them and I was talking to them a bit but I wasn't properly able to talk to them. I said hello to them but then went back to put out fires and to have the, um, the interview which meant that a picture that was taken after the, the the security check of the people that are related to the the flight was basically only men. Um, it was the ambassador, a couple of the guys from the charity, uh, another guy of the security, and none of the women that was involved with it was on that picture, whether it was me, whether it was Dana from Colombia, Sivan from Israel, none of the girls from the council that was basically working their ass off uh, for two days with working extra hours to try to organize for everyone all their permits that they needed in order to get to the flight. I keep saying about the fact that um, the way that I was raised I didn't feel the difference between men and women and not having equality and whatever. And then I see this picture and I don't know, 
none of the women is there. Some credit for the flight after that was taken by people that weren't really the people that didn't sleep for days on days on days just to make this flight happening. After the, the interview, I went to see because I've seen a few people that still weren't, didn't finish with their checks. I thought it was just the dog situation because there were a lot of people with dogs. And then I've seen Sarit sitting on the ground and uh, the operational manager came and told me she didn't feel well. I went to see what's going on with her and basically it seemed like she almost fainted. Because all the running around and trying to book the flight and packing her stuff and all that, um, she didn't eat and probably didn't drink and she was dehydrated and had a sugar drop. A paramedic came to check on her and she said that, yeah, she will be fine. She gave her some pill to help her to go through the flight okay. Then I went with her to the toilet and after the toilet they came with a wheelchair to assist her to get into the airplane. Then she stood and she was about to go on the sleeve to get to the airplane and again she almost collapsed. And she needed to vomit so I went with her again to the toilet and Everybody was already on the airplane. Amir was calling me and asking me, um, where am I? And I'm like, don't worry, I'm, they're not going to live without me. And trying to negotiate with the operational manager about what we're going to do. It's a flight of 14 hours. It's closed. Either way, in airplane, once you're up in the air, it dehydrates your body. Um, and we weren't sure if she could make it. She really wanted to be on that flight and we really wanted her to be on that flight, but then we didn't want her to be in any, in any health risk. Another paramedic came and went to check on her and said she needed at least an hour or two before she could go on the flight. And then the operational manager said, okay, then go, go on the airplane. So I went on the airplane all disorientated after everything that happened and quite emotional. And when I sat in my seat, I just started crying. Amir came and gave me a hug and Amit came to check as well. And then Sarit called me and I see Neil coming on the the airplane without her. The airplane needed to leave. They they couldn't wait any longer. The paramedic said that she could sign a paper and then she could go on the flight. But signing the paper would mean that she take the responsibility instead of the paramedics taking the responsibility. But it doesn't really mean that she's actually okay to fly. And it's a huge decision you're taking a risk with someone's life to talk to near the operational manager and he was not next to me someone went to call him and then I was just crying and I didn't know what to say to her and for two months I kept saying to people that I'm not leaving anyone behind and then I have her on the phone with me telling me please don't leave me here and I just didn't know what to tell her. The operational manager told me that in normal times he would just let her on the airplane, put someone next to her and make sure that she's okay throughout the flight. During Corona times, almost all the airports are shut. So if needed to do an emergency landing, there isn't really that option. And he's responsible for an airplane with 160 people. So it was, he couldn't take that risk and he made the decision to leave her there and he said that he put her next to the ambassador and told him take care of her and I was still with her on the phone and she kept saying to me to not leave her there and and I said that I'm sorry because I, I, I didn't have anything to do it's not my decision when the airplane started driving and she's saying to me, but you're still here? And I told her, no, the airplane started to 
to move. I, I have nothing that I can do. And she said to me, I see the airplane, and she probably seen a different airplane. And the flight attendants come and tell me that uh, I need to shut the phone, and I couldn't, and I was my battery was about to die. And I told her that if the the conversation shuts, that she won't think that I hung up on her. And I've sent her the the phone of the girl that is from the console that can help her with permits. I just couldn't stop crying. And one of the flight attendant asked me if I want to take the phone to near the 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 operational manager, and she took the phone to him. So he, he couldn't say anything more than what he told her. One of the the crew basically talked to her and calmed her down. She is now in Panama, and she's safe. She feels well. And assuming that if we had an hour or two or even three more, she could go on the airplane, and in real normal time, she would have been able to go on the airplane. But during that time she was just it wasn't um it was impossible when i landed a lot of people came and said to me thank you and one of the women was really emotional and said about the fact of um that i saved her family um and you know it it wasn't just me it, i i started with it two months ago and I insisted on the fact that it can happen and I contacted a lot of people and whatsapped everyone in the government of Israel and um, media and tried to raise money whomever like everyone that I could think of I succeeded to collect the group of people that believed also with me that it can happen and believed that they can help and they helped me make it happen um, and I'm grateful for each and every one of them and it's weird because I'm now back in Israel at my mom's house in isolation there's an extra floor that is basically apart from my mom so I have my own toilet and a shower and I have a balcony <laughs> um, that means that I have um, fresh air um, and birds come to visit, which is nice. Um, and I'm kind of now catching up still with uh, birthday messages. Everybody asks, okay, what's next? How long are you in Israel? There isn't theater at the moment in England, so I don't have much to do in England. The reason that I moved was theater. It's really hard. I miss the theater, I miss doing my job. I was starting to think about um, different acting things that I can do on camera. One of them is a character that I created last year for um, Midsummer Night's Rave. And I fell in love with him. So maybe there will be a surprise with that character. And I'm taking the time and reading plays that I had waiting at my mom's house for a long time. and. I just didn't get to read them because I was all the time busy with reading plays that I was actually performing. I think that's it for now. I'm currently in Israel and kind of taking it day by day. Um, we're living a weird time. I think Corona time is a very interesting time that reminds all of us to live the moment. And I'm very appreciative of it. And I think in the past four months, I was so living the moment and like for now, for now, for that I didn't even have time to stop for a moment and realizing what's going on. Um, I was just automatically doing and doing and doing. And now I have time to kind of stop for a bit and consciously do, if it makes any sense. Um, yeah, <laughs> I think that's it for now. Um, that's it and with um, isolation and quarantine in Israel. See you on the next vlog.